congruent triangles to prove constructions valid. This is 4.9c. This is the last video for chapter 4. We've got 17 previous videos for this chapter, and you can go to the geometry playlist linked in the description and watch the ones you've missed. In this chapter, we learned to prove triangles congruent and to use properties of congruent triangles in other proofs. Now we're going to use the properties of congruent triangles to prove constructions valid. So make sure when you're making constructions that your compass is tight and can hold the setting. You don't want it really loose and, and you know, moving inward and losing your measurement, okay? You want to make sure the compass can hold the pencil firmly without slipping. And you want to make sure your straight edge is free of cracks or breaks and is long enough to complete your line. If you're using a protractor and your line needs to be 8 inches, well, most protractors are only 6 inches. So make sure your straight edge is long enough and it's not broken, okay? When we do a compass and straight edge construction, the compass setting stays the same width until we change it. And because of this, it allows us to construct a segment congruent to a given segment. We can assume that two distances constructed with the same compass setting are congruent. So back in video 1.2, we learned how to construct congruent segments. So we've got our segment here. We've got two points on the segment. We can say they're A and B. We take our compass and we measure the distance between them like this until they match. Then we can draw a line or a ray and we put the point on our point that we put on the line. We make an arc, and this right here would be the second point, and this setting should equal this setting. See? We made a congruent segment. And the steps in the construction of a figure can be justified by combining the assumptions of compass and straight edge constructions and the postulates and theorems that are used for proving triangles congruent. We've learned that there is exactly one midpoint on any line segment. We'll do a proof that justifies the construction of a midpoint. So here's proving the construction of a midpoint. So take a look at this diagram. We've got a midpoint M right here. And what we did was we had this AB segment and we opened up our compass more than halfway of the length of the segment and we made an arc. So I made it about right there. So I put the point on A and I made a very big arc. Then I put it on B and I made a very big arc and I marked this intersection C and that intersection D, and then I took a straight edge and drew a line through CD, and where it hit AB is our midpoint, see? So the given is the diagram showing the steps in the construction, we need to prove that M is the midpoint of segment AB. So we've got a two column proof with, look at this, nine statements and reasons. So we draw segment AC, BC, AD, and BD. That's these dotted lines, AC, BC, AD, and BD. Our reason is, through any two points, there's exactly one line. And for number two, segment AC is congruent to segment BC, which is congruent to segment AD, which is congruent to segment BD. These lines we drew are all congruent because we use the same compass setting. Number three says segment CD is congruent to segment CD. Well, that means this segment CD is for this triangle is congruent to the CD that's used for this triangle on the right side, okay? And that's a reflexive property of congruence. Number four says triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD. So this triangle right here on the left is congruent to this triangle on the right. That's using side 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 for steps two and three we have side and side and all these sides number five says angle acd is congruent to angle bcd well we know the triangles are congruent that's cpctc congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent number six we have segment cm is congruent to segment cm so let's see this so this is segment cm right here now they're just talking about the two triangles on the top this one and this one see and this segment for this triangle is congruent to this segment for this triangle because they share it. So that's reflexive property of congruence again. That brings us to seven, that triangle ACM 
is congruent to triangle BCM. So they're saying this little triangle here is congruent to this little triangle up here. And that's side angle side using steps two, five, and six. Side, angle, side. Number eight says segment AM is congruent to segment BM. So this segment is congruent to this segment and that's CPCTC, congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent because they're the both, both sides, aren't they? If we're looking at these two little triangles at the top, this side is congruent to this side, see? That brings us to number nine, that M is the midpoint of segment AB because that's the definition of a midpoint. So we know if this side is congruent to this side, then that must be the midpoint, so we proved it, okay? Now here's proving the construction of an angle. I don't know if you remember how to draw, make a congruent angle, but we covered this before. And we had this original blue angle, BAC, uh, and what we did was we took our compass and we made, we put it on point A and we made an arc through both of the rays. We marked this C and that B where they intersect. We took the compass with the same setting and we drew a ray, point D, through point P, and we put our compass on D, and we made that same arc with the same setting from this one. Then we took our compass, and we measured the distance between B and C, and we made an arc with our point on C. Then we marked this F, where it intersected the ray, and we put our compass there at the same setting that we had here, and we made an arc. We can mark that intersection E and draw with a straight edge this ray coming through E from D, see? So it's given the diagram showing the steps in the construction. We need to prove that angle A is congruent to angle D. So we have a paragraph proof. Since there is a straight line through any two points, we can draw segment BC and segment EF. So we drew this dotted line BC and EF, okay? And the same compass setting was used to construct segment AC, segment AB, segment DF, and segment DE. So they are all congruent to each other. Segment AC is congruent to segment AB, which is congruent to segment DF, which is congruent to DE. Same compass setting. And the same compass setting was used to construct BC and EF. The dotted line here and the dotted line here. So segment BC is congruent to segment EF. Therefore, triangle BAC, our original one, is congruent to our new one, triangle EDF, by side, 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 and angle A is congruent to angle D by CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And the steps to proving a construction valid. First, we identify congruent segments constructed with the same compass setting. And we use triangle congruence in CPCTC. Congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or other theorems and postulates, to complete the proof. So make sure when you're doing a construction that you don't start with, you know, points and rays that are too big for your compass because it only opens so far. So you want to make it comfortable, so you don't want to make them too big, okay? Our next lesson is going to be Chapter 5, Perpendicular Bisector Theorem and its Converse, 5.1a. So if you don't remember how to make congruent segments or angles, you need to practice that, okay? And I will see you next time. I hope you have a great day. Hit the like button. Bye.